Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is November 2nd, Thursday, so this will be the last Stock Pick of the Day video for the week. We don't do them on Fridays. Today we are going to take a look at KBR. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have ever heard of this company. It is not one that I was familiar with, but they did have a big drop on the day, so let's take a look. If you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.kbr.com. That's www.kbr.com. Simply put, at KBR, we do things that matter. Every day, our people work together to deliver solutions that are helping solve the great challenges and opportunities of our time, including climate change, national security, energy transition and security, cybersecurity, space exploration, and more. The KBR team of teams delivers future forward science, technology, and engineering solutions and mission critical services that help governments and companies around the world accomplish their most important <coughs> excuse me, their most important objectives while also helping achieve their sustainability goals. We deliver through two primary businesses, government solutions and sustainable technology solutions. So really what I gathered from this is this is a, more or less a consulting firm. They were founded back in 1901, so they've been around for well over 100 years. Their you know, primary focus is scientific technology engineering solutions for, as they state, uh, individual businesses as well as governments. And that includes the United States government. They've been paying a dividend since 2013 and growing it since 2020, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So... I mean, this is the type of company that comes in whenever other companies or governments have trouble and they figure out a solution for them, right? That's what they do. And the reason we are taking a look at them, down 13.56% on the day, huge drop on the day. Uh, anytime I see a big drop like that, we're going to take a look at the company, especially if it pays dividends and specifically if it pays dividends, because this is a dividend growth channel. That's what we focus on. We are talking about KBR Inc., ticker KBR. They out, are out of the industrial sector, believe it or not. I actually thought they might be out of the information technology sector based on what they do, but they uh, floated into the industrial sector. So close the day out at $50.37. 52-week range, as low as $47.70, as high as $65.87. So pretty close to their 52-week low. Average volume of $1.2 million. Today's was $7.2, and pretty much a sell-off from start to finish there. Market cap of $6.796 billion. So this is a small-cap company. A beta of $1.12. So they are more volatile than the overall market. Again, you can see that volatility throughout the day. P.E. ratio was not available. That leads me to believe it's in the negative, which is not good. EPS is in the negative, 0.86%, negative 0.86%. So that is not good. So, so far, not off to a great start. Earnings date, November 2nd. So that was today. So I would assume something in their earnings did not sit right with investors or they wouldn't be jumping out of this one. Forward dividend is 54 cents. They are a quarterly payer. We'll see that here in a, a little bit. Low dividend yield on this one, 0.93%. So that is much lower than I typically go for. It would have to be really smoking high growth on this one for me to be interested. X dividend date is coming up December 14th. And it looks like they'll pay out uh, January 16th. So January payer, there aren't a whole lot of those out there. So that's uh, nice to see. But so far, none of the numbers look great. And one year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, not affiliated, just one of the sources I go to for information, of $74.11. So they do see some upside in the stock price, actually setting a new 52-week low if it happens to hit their target. Now let's go into statistics. We're going to take a look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is presenting any value. And to do that, you go into statistics, you go down to dividends and splits. You look at their forward annual dividend yield, 0.93, or where it currently sits, 0.93. It's the same number. You compare it to the five-year average. And since it is lower than the 1.18 five-year average, this tells me this one is overvalued, potentially overvalued, at least according to dividend yield theory. Now, they say the payout ratio here is 21.24%, so very low payout ratio, if, if this is correct, uh, very low. So a lot of room to increase this dividend over time, and that's what I would definitely want to see with such a low payout, uh, low starting yield on this one. Now, financials is going to show you a lot of good information as well. You can find their balance sheet, their income statement, all that information that's involved around that. How are they sitting with their debt to equity? Are they paying down their debt? Are they taking on more debt? Are they buying back shares? You know, what do their assets over liabilities look like? 
what are their margins, what is their revenue, is it growing over time, all good information to look up. You want to do that anytime you're interested in investing in a company, you really want to get into the books and see how they're doing. You also want to look at growing free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow as dividend growth investors because we want growing dividends over time and dividends are paid out of free cash flow. So going back to 2019, 236 million, jump up in 2020 to 347 million, 2021 jump up to 204 or drop down to 241 million. And anyone who hasn't used Yahoo Finance, you do add three zeros onto this. I know it looks like it's 241,000, but it is actually 241 million uh, right here. So a drop down from 2020 to 2021, jump back up in 2022 to 325. And it looks like so far in 2023, they're at 380 million. So overall from 2019, not only do they have growing free cash flow, but it looks like they are repurchasing some of their shares. Not a lot in 2019, jump up to 51 in 2020, 82, big jump up in 2022, looks like even more in 2023. So I do like that they're repurchasing their own shares. I just don't like that this price earnings ratio is not available and their EPS is negative. That's not a good sign. Now, according to stockanalysis.com, this is another source that I like to go to for information. You should make sure you are looking at more than one source so you can back check the information that you're getting is accurate and up to date. And I am not affiliated with stockanalysis.com either, uh, though I wouldn't mind them paying me to use them as a reference. Uh, I just am not affiliated right now. Uh, maybe someday I'll reach out to them. Now, they call it, according to the nine stock analyst, a strong buy. You don't see a whole lot of strong buys, but they have a strong buy on this one. They have a low estimate of $65, and it currently sits 15, uh, nearly $15 under their lowest estimate. So if it was to come back up, that would be a 29.05% increase from where it currently sits. They have an average estimate of $72.44. That would be a 43.82% increase from where it currently sits. And this is pretty much in line with what we saw on the previous page with Yahoo Finance and a high estimate of $77, which would be a 52.87% increase. All the while you could collect that, you know, just under 1% dividend yield if you were to buy them now. Now, I like to get into statistics on this one and look at return on equity and return on invested capital. Now, this one, I think you probably should compare to companies that are similar in nature because I like 10% or better or compared to their industry average. And I'm not sure about this industry. I would really have to do more research on this company and some of its competitors to see where they sit. But the numbers do not look good. Return on equity, negative 6.1%. That's much lower than the 10% that I like. And they don't even list return on invested capital. I would assume it is in the negative uh, or they would list it. Return on assets, return on equity is both negative. So I would assume this is negative as well. So again, not a lot of good numbers, a lot of negatives and not available on this one. I don't like that usually. Now let's look at EPS growth. I do look at EPS growth. I like 5% or better growth. And this one is estimated to grow at 38.38%. So maybe I'm not as concerned with a negative EPS if it is really going to grow at a 38 plus percent clip. That is very, very high, smoking high really. And they even have their re revenue growth forecasted at 10.92%. That is very high as well. So overall, their projections, if they hit their projections, do show them, you know, starting to turn things around, probably heading in the positive from a negative. And they are a small cap company. So I did look back at their dividends. They have been paying dividends since 2013. Uh, well, let's, let's flip over to dividends and talk about that. So as you can see, dividend growth, 12.5%. We saw on the previous uh, from Yahoo Finance, they don't list the payout ratio here, but they listed it at 21%. So I'd really want to look at one more source just to verify it is indeed 21% uh, because that's very low and they have a lot of room to grow. And I do like that their dividend growth is so high. Their projections on EPS and revenue very high as well. So uh, might be worth one throwing on the watch list. They again have been paying a dividend since 2013, but... They have only been raising the dividend since 2020. If you were to go back just two quarters before this, you would have seen it at eight cents back in 2019. They raised it up to 10 cents in 2020, raised it up to 11 cents April 1st, 2021, raised it up to 12 cents March 14th, 2022, raised it up to 13 and a fraction of a penny in 2023. So I would anticipate if they were going to continue that raise sometime in February or March, they will raise it up again in 2024. Nice dividend growth on this one. They do pay out on that January, April, July, October timeframe. Again, not a lot of companies do, so it is one that I like for that aspect. 
Let me know what you think of this company down below. Have you ever heard of it? I had never even heard of KBR before. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Hit the like button if you find any value in the content. Share with anyone you think that might find value in the content. And drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of KBR. Let me know what you think of the videos. Now, this is the Vested Interest Stock Screener. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company, just like we walk through them in these videos on a high level to see if I'm interested in investing. And if, if it meets five of eight or six of nine, if it's a financial company like a bank, then I will throw it into the possible pile, my watch list pile, and then I will do more of a deep dive, really get into the books on it, do a discounted cash flow analysis, see what I'm willing to pay. And if it meets that criteria, then I will add it to the portfolio. So this is just the first part of looking at a company on a high level to see if I'm even interested in it. And it's, again, how I set up the videos as well. Well, that is it for this one. Let me know what you think of KBR. Again, is it one that you are familiar with? Do you know any other companies that are similar? Or is it the first time you've heard of it? Drop it down in the comment section below. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Now, I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So if you have a company like KBR you'd like me to cover in the stock pick of the day series and do a video on, drop it down below and I'll work it into the rotation. Now, this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, tune back in. Uh, Sunday, we'll do our typical portfolio update to show you what I bought this week, any dividends that were paid out, any options I was in. And I do have one coming out probably tomorrow and another one on Saturday. One will be the stocks I'm looking to buy in November because we are in November. We're in the second. So that will probably come out tomorrow on Friday. And then we'll do uh, the dividends that were paid out for the month of October on Saturday. So tune back in. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be jam-packed with more videos. So we'll see you in those. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk and can't lose money. You should never invest any amount in a comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and intellectual criteria, or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.